Hey everyone, I hope that you are well. I am Professor Andrew Timming, and I'm very pleased to welcome you to this lecture entitled, What is a T-Test? This lecture corresponds to chapter five of my book, Applied Statistics, Business and Management Research. So what is a T-Test? I believe this question is a bit of a misnomer. And the reason it's a bit of a misnomer is that there are in fact two different forms of t-tests that we'll be looking at in this lecture series the first form is referred to as the independent samples t-test and the second is the paired sample t-test these statistical tests are based on similar logic so you're comparing mean scores uh, either across groups in the case of the former or across time in the case of the latter uh, the computation of the T statistic is similar again in, in both cases, um, but there, there is no one single T test. The most common T test, I suppose, I mean, I guess it depends on your discipline. If you're a psychologist, the most common one might be a paired sample T test because that's ideally suited for experimental research. Um, but for other social sciences, the most common one I would say is the independent samples T test. So that's the one we're going to focus on primarily in this lecture. Now, I want to thank you for bearing with me all the way to chapter five uh, so that we can get down to the business of carrying out statistical tests. And you might be wondering why we're carrying out our first statistical test in chapter five and not in chapter one. And the answer to that question is that you can't just carry out a statistical test without the necessary background information. So in the first four chapters, I gave you that background information. I provided you with the fundamentals of inferential statistics without actually carrying out any statistical tests. So that now that we get to the chapters where we're going to start doing statistical tests, uh, a lot of the uh, elements of those tests will be taken for granted by you. Um, had you not had an introduction to these tests, it would have been difficult for you to carry them out. So that's why the first statistical test starts here in chapter five. This is the book that we're using in this lecture series. It's entitled Applied Statistics, Business and Management Research. It's a book that I wrote and published recently. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed reading it thus far, and I hope that you continue to enjoy reading it. Uh, as I said, this particular lecture series will focus on chapter five. So if you've not already read chapters one through four, best to pause here, go back and read those chapters and watch the lectures associated with them so that again, you will be up to speed with some of the terminology that I will be using throughout this lecture and indeed the rest of the book, which covers various statistical tests. All right, so uh, how about we jump right into the t-test and we'll get into the nitty gritty, as they say. All right, so let's start with the most fundamental question of all. What is a t-test? Uh, as I said before, uh, there are two different types of t-tests, but they're based on a similar logic. So looking at the big picture, a t-test can be defined as a parametric statistical test. And what do I mean by a parametric statistical test? A parametric test is a statistical test that's predicated or based on the assumption of a normal distribution. You'll recall from the previous chapter, chapter four, we talked about a normal distribution and how knowledge of the geography of a normal distribution is the mechanism that enables us to generalize from a sample to a population. So a t-test uh, is a statistical test that assumes that the dependent variable, whatever that is, is normally distributed. Okay, so that's what a t-test is. It is also a bivariate statistical test. What do I mean by bivariate? What I mean by bivariate is that it only looks at the relationship between two variables, one of which is our independent variable. We call this variable X, 
and the other of which is our dependent variable or our outcome variable and we tend to call this variable y. Now the characteristics of each variable are uh, tightly specified for a t-test. So for an independent samples t-test your x variable has to be nominal right so non-hierarchical and that nominal variable has to have only two categories associated with it. In other words, it has to be a binary uh, or a dichotomous variable. If it has more than two categories, then it is inappropriate for a t-test. Uh, similarly, the dependent variable, the outcome variable, has to be either ordinal or scale in terms of its measurement, uh, preferably scale. We allow ordinal variables in these tests, but we prefer that they're scale. And the reason we prefer that they're scale is that scale variables, scale level variables, tend to be more normally distributed than ordinal variables. So as I said, there are two different types of t-test. There's the independent samples t-test, which compares two mean scores across two independent samples or groups. And that doesn't need, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to take two separate samples. You can take one sample and then naturally divide that sample into two groups, for example, men and women, or those on a fixed term contract versus those on a continuing contract, or whatever dividing line you choose, you need to create those two groups. And then essentially what you do is you compare those groups in terms of their mean scores on a particular outcome. The paired sample t-test, on the other hand, also compares mean scores but within the same group but across time so you take a single sample you'll measure uh, a particular ordinal or scale level variable in that sample and then you might take the sample a second time measure that outcome variable again a second time and look to see whether or not the mean scores are different between time one and time two and i, I said this is common for psychologists because in between time one and time two, they would usually implement some kind of intervention that might be designed to change that outcome and they can assess the extent of that change. So let's talk a bit about the logic uh, of calculating a t-test. Now, whether you're doing an independent samples t-test that compares mean scores across two groups, or whether you're carrying out a paired sample t-test that compares mean scores across the same group but at different points in time ultimately what you're doing is you're calculating first something called a t statistic right this is a statistic that says something about the magnitude of the differences between the two groups or across the two different periods of time and that t statistic corresponds to a p value and the p value as we learned about in a previous lecture speaks to the confidence that we have that our result of our t-test generalizes from the sample of the population. So let me explain it in this way, right? So let's say we have a sample of 100 people, 100 employees, and we're dividing this sample into two groups. So let's say 50 employees in group A and 50 employees in group B. And we're looking at whether or not these two groups differ on a particular outcome, we'll call this Y. Whatever that outcome is, it doesn't matter. Now, almost inevitably in our sample, you're gonna find a difference in mean scores across those two groups. It will occur naturally. But we can't in extrapolate from that difference that the difference also holds water in the wider population. What we want to know is, is the difference in mean scores large enough within the sample so that we can generalize that difference to the wider population? So the larger the difference in mean scores within the sample, the more confidence we have that that difference also holds water or that difference is also valid in the wider population. And what we do is we take the p-value of less than 0.05 to indicate our confidence that a particular mean score difference within the sample also holds water in the wider population. So that's the general logic of the calculation.
So now you understand the logic of a t-test. You're comparing mean scores. And in the case of an independent samples t-test, which is the, the primary focus of this chapter, what you're doing is you're comparing mean scores across two different groups. And the larger the mean scores within your sample, the more likely that difference generalizes to the population. So now you understand that logic. Let's look at a few practical research questions that a researcher, a data scientist could ask and answer using a t-test. So let's take them one by one. Do trade union members take more sick days than non-trade union members, right? So we've got two variables here. The independent variable is essentially, are you a member of a trade union? Yes or no. And the dependent variable is uh, how many sick days do you take, say, per year? Once you have these data, these two variables, you can carry out an independent samples t-test and look at that difference. And if the difference uh, that you see in mean scores has a p-value that is less than 0.05, then you will conclude that that difference is statistically significant and therefore generalizable. Let's look at the second one. Do employees with university degrees score more highly on their performance appraisals than employees without a university degree? So think about that for a moment. What kind of result might you expect? Our independent variable here is, do you have a university degree? Yes or no. So it's a two category nominal variable. And our outcome variable, our dependent variable, is your performance appraisal score. So whatever that might be on a scale of you know one to 10 or whatever. And what you're doing is you're looking at whether or not performance appraisal scores differ across differs across those two groups. Do employees with children work fewer hours per week than employees without children? So again, independent variable, do you have children? Yes or no. And how many hours, let's say per week do you work? And then you compare those mean scores to see whether or not the difference is generalizable. Do white employees report higher levels of trust in management than non-white employees? Think about the logic underlying this question. Why would you expect there to be a difference? What is your independent variable? Well, in this case, the independent variable is what is your race? So this is simply uh, measured as either white or non-white. And then you would have to have some kind of outcome variable that measures the extent to which an individual trusts in management. Are employees in nonprofit firms more committed to their organization than employees working in for-profit firms, right? So your independent variable here would be what type of organization do you work for? Nonprofit versus for-profit. And your dependent variable would be how committed are you to your organization, right? So this is the um, just a set of uh, examples of research questions that a researcher could ask and answer using an independent samples t-test. Let's look at a few more research questions that one might ask and answer using an independent samples t-test. Uh, so the first one, do marketing professionals spend more time surfing the World Wide Web than human resources professionals? I don't know why someone would want to ask that question, uh, but you could ask the question and you could answer it using a t-test. So in this case, the independent variable would be a two category nominal variable, something along the lines of, are you a marketing professional or an HR professional? And the dependent variable would be the amount of time that a, an employee spends surfing the World Wide Web, let's say per week. And then what you would do is you would break up into those two groups and compare the mean scores across those groups and then determine based on your p-value whether or not that difference is generalizable to the wider population. So if your p-value is less than 0.05, then you would conclude that there is a significant difference in time spent surfing the web between marketing professionals and HR professionals. Here's another weird question. I'm not sure why anyone want, would want to ask this question, but you certainly could, and you could answer it with a t-test. Are atheist employees more sexually active than religious employees? So your independent variable is a measure of your uh, religious affiliation. So are you an atheist or religious? And your dependent variable might be some measure of sexual activity, um, number of sexual partners or 
number of you know minutes you've spent engaging in sexual activity in the last month and then you can compare across those two groups to see whether or not there is a difference that is generalizable to the wider population. Do supervisors report higher levels of workplace stress than non-supervisory employees? So you might expect that the, the fact that you're a supervisor and you're overseeing the work of others might add extra stress to your job compared to non-supervisory employees. Well, you could test this question using a t-test. So your independent variable is uh, which group do you belong to? Are you a supervisory employee or a non-supervisory employee? And what is your level of workplace stress? You might have some kind of measure of the extent to which an individual feels stressed at work. Lastly, are men more satisfied in their jobs than women? So the, the group difference here would be male versus female employees, and the outcome that we're looking at for the difference would be some measure of job satisfaction. All right, let's take this research question and see how we could answer it using an independent samples t-test. So the question is, are left-handed people more creative than right-handed people? Think for a moment about what you might expect. Maybe you would expect there to be no difference at all. Uh, you could still test this question. Um, but let's say you assume that left-handed people uh, might be more creative than right-handed people because, I don't know, your, your brother is left-handed and he's, he's really good at art or something like that. Now, this isn't a very um, informed way of thinking. You can't just say, well, because I know one case of someone being left-handed and more creative, that there's an association between those two variables. So what we want to do is actually construct a statistical test, and the test we'll use is the independent samples t-test. So let's start with these questions. What is your independent variable? Your independent variable would be handedness. Are you left-handed or are you right-handed? So this is creating two different groups that we can compare. There's a group of people who are left-handed and there's a group of people who are right-handed. And the outcome variable that we're looking at is, your dependent variable, is some measure of creativity, right? So we already know how to measure the independent variable handedness. It's a simple question. Are you left-handed or right-handed? But how would you measure your dependent variable creativity? There might be any number of scales, established scales that you could use, that you could identify in the literature on creativity. But a simple one might be how creative do you think you are on a scale of zero to 10 or on a scale of one to 10? This would be self-reported creativity. I think perhaps a better way of answering this question would be asking a manager to rate the employee on perceived creativity. Again, you could use a scale of one to 10. So what you would do then is you would collect your samples. So how big a sample do you need? Uh, generally speaking, I would say at a, at a minimum, you're, with, you're looking at maybe 200, so maybe 100 left-handers and 100 right-handers. Um, but the bigger the sample, the better. Let's say you can get a sample of, of uh, let's say, 2,000. It might be difficult to find a sample with 1,000 left-handers and 1,000 right-handers. And the reason is that there are more right-handers than left-handers. So you would tend to have a sort of lopsidedness in terms of your groups. Um, and that's a, that's a bit of an issue, right? You want to have roughly equal numbers across your group, so you might need to stratify your sample. And then essentially what you're doing is you're looking at that, so you might want to start with your average creativity score, so across the entire sample, regardless of group, and then you will break up into your two groups of left-handers and right-handers, and then look at the average creativity score there, and then look at your p-value and your t-statistic to tell you whether or not that difference generalizes to the wider population. And so look, let's look at the same process with this question. Are cross-culturally diverse teams more productive than culturally homogeneous teams? It's an interesting research question that you might be curious about. So what's your independent variable? Your independent variable would be, uh, is your team cross-cultural or culturally homogeneous. So there we have our, our two groups. And how would you measure that? Uh, if you have, let's say, teams of four in your organization, and some of those teams have all the same uh, 
cultural uh, similarity. And then you have other teams that have members of different cultures that compose them. Uh, your independent variable naturally measures itself. You have two different groups that you can look at. Your dependent variable would be some measure of productivity. Now you could ask, as with the previous example, how productive do you think you are as a group? Uh, but a better way to do it would be to ask managers to evaluate those groups on productivity. Again, let's say in a scale of one to 10. Uh, again, you want as big a sample as you can get, let's say a minimum of around 200. There's no hard and fast rules, but a minimum of around 200. Um, and ideally you want to get a couple thousand and think about the results you might expect. Which way do you think that this would go? Only a t-test will be able to answer the question for you. So there are a number of assumptions underlying uh, a t-test. Uh, this is particularly for an independent samples t-test. The First of all, the sample should be randomly drawn to ensure representativeness. Remember, we talked about randomly drawn samples being ones where every member of the population has an equal probability of selection into that sample. The reason we want random samples is that they tend to look and behave more like the population than non-random samples. The independent variable has to be two categories and nominal. In other words, if it doesn't conform to that, we can't carry out the test. The two groups must be independent of one another. In other words, membership of one group cannot be conditional on membership of another group. The dependent variable must be ordinal or scale level. Again, we prefer scale, but we allow ordinal. And the outcome variable, the dependent variable must be, or should be, I'll say, roughly normally distributed because it's the normal distribution that gives us the mechanism to make that generalization. And finally, the variances across the two groups, that is to say the spread of the scores must be also roughly equal. So this refers to the assumption of homogeneity of variance. And we'll learn more about this as we go through some examples using SPSS. Okay, so thank you very much for bearing with me as you learned a bit about the t-test. Uh, stick around please and uh, tune in to part two of this lecture series. I'll look forward to seeing you then. Thanks. Bye.